We're going to continue the second half of Sikhuf Tzadik Hei, Hilchas Nida. It's a quick review of an important, an important point in this simon was the Machlekes, Rambam and Ramban, as far as the possible Loti Krevu Le Galot Erva. In other words, not to get close to an Erva, where the Rambam's position is that any Maise Kirva, like embracing and kissing, is Minatora. Like a Minatora, he says, you get lashes for doing it. It's not only talk, talking about Bia, whereas the Ramban says that that Pasuk is more on Bia and all the other Kiruvim, all the other types of uh, affectionate actions with Arias are Asur Midr Rabbanam. Machabra, as we saw, Paschans like the Rambam. However, there are certain Harchokas that are the, that are the Rabbanam. We also pointed out that there's somewhat of a difference with Ishto and Nida, when his wife is a Nida, which is also included in Arias, uh, as opposed to other Arias. There are certain, certain things that are permissible with Ishto and Nida that are forbidden with other Arias, and there are certain things that are forbidden for Ishto and Nida and are permissible, or not uh, much of a problem with other Arias. And that's only because he's used to his wife, certain things, certain actions, certain behavior that may lead them to do the wrong things. So that's why, that's at least one explanation of why we need certain harchokas, which is what most of the simon is all about. So the obvious, we covered already, the obvious of, of attitude, behavior, of, of affectionate talk, and all the kinds of things that a husband and wife can do during the time of Shikhlin, and even encouraged to do, to have a good relationship. Uh, these, obviously, these things are forbidden during the time that she's done. And what, by the way, when we say she's a nida, as we will soon see, it not only covers the time that she's actually clean during her period, but even during Yemei Libuna, during the days that she's counting, her clean days, getting ready to go to the mikvah. Even though there may be some small differences towards the end, we'll see that. But for the most part, we're talking about the entire 11, 12 day period of the nida, that one has to be cognizant the distance needs to be maintained. They both need to realize this in the way, in the same way he needs to be careful, so does she need to be careful. But there's some slight different halachas, apparently, and we saw that for the husband it's more serious than for the woman. In other words, he has to be more careful with certain things than she does. Right? Eating leftover food from her, her eating from him, from his leftover, and so forth. We did see some minor differences. And we will see it some more today when um, we talk a little bit about a situation that happens occasionally when one of the two is sick, the husband is sick or the wife is sick, and how to best deal with that kind of a situation when some contact has to happen and there's no help in the house. Obviously, it's help in the house, and we're always going to ask for that help. So there are certain in the uh, in eating together, especially eating from the same bowl and so forth. And there is a certain need. And we see that in various halachas of a certain of heker. A husband and a wife need to both recognize it and not forget themselves that during these days she's a nida. You know, people can forget, oh, I forgot, oh, you know, uh, I thought it was over, I, oh, I thought it didn't gain, oh, all kinds of situations where men or women can forget for the moment, may do something wrong. So because of that, there is a, an inyan, there is a need of, 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 of a heker. What kind of a heker? Well, we saw harchokas. We saw certain things that are not done, like handing things over to the other. Uh, and obviously, we're not even talking about now the, the more physical things, because those are completely off limits. But even those things that are not so obvious, and we'll talk about one of them today, is like, you know, you want to serve, the woman wants to serve her husband a drink. It may not appear to be something so intimate, but Chazal say it is. So we'll talk about that. It, and that's why they list for us what is something that is der chibo, what is something that is considered affectionate, what is something that comes across is the appearance or may lead to more affectionate behavior. And therefore, you know, that's human nature. And we cannot take a chance, which is really what this whole simon is all about, is we don't take a chance. The isa of nida is a very serious isa. And we don't take chances. <laughs> I can just imagine one husband saying, ah, this doesn't apply to me. I couldn't care less. I ignore it. I can shut my eyes. <laughs> she can say the same thing. Yeah. Or we're over 65. There's no exemption for me. 
If she didn't go to the mikvah, she's still a nida. Yes, you're right. But you, yeah, I just gave an extreme example. Uh, older people. So at 65, a woman would most likely not be a nida. But still, people can have all kinds of excuses. I'm not even talking about those who, want, who are going to say, oh, this is extreme. This is a chumrah. What is a chumrah for? Chachamim were very well familiar with the psychology, the human mind, how he can easily justify things, how he can really allow himself certain things. Adam Korov Le'atzmoy, they say, man is very close and biased to himself, so doesn't always see things objectively, he is very subjective, man and women alike. And Arias is an area where many, many people, the best, the greatest, the smartest, have fallen. Oh, why take a chance? Whether it's one's wife or with other women too. Yes? Subjectively, you can't be more lean because you can refer to yourself. Yes, and we're going to see an example of that. According to the Orach HaShulchan, he has a whole uh, shtickle, I think, his whole mahalach of how he understands a particular if later on. So we spoke a little bit about bed, about sleeping on, on one bed, which is obviously a problem, and about sitting at a bench, and so forth. So there are various areas that could lead to the, to the realist, sir, which is why the Chachamim said, you know what, during these few days, stay away. However, in Sif Zion, there's something which is a little bit different, and that is looking. As far as looking at the one's wife, it's not a problem. Even if you want to en- enjoy that, whereas with other arise you can't do that, is, that is not a problem. We said even Yichud with one's wife is not a problem, because eventually she'll be muteris. Certain things the Chachamim were not concerned, were not choishish. But so therefore, Sif Zayin is different because not only of the severity of the of this particular uh, type of behavior, but apparently it could also lead to a worse thing. The Sif Zayin is the Machaber says lo istakel afilo ba'akebo. You should not even look at her heel. The lobim koymus amechusim shibo. Should not look at the, all those areas that are usually concealed, closed, hidden. Aval, I mean, we see that mutal is takil, but in kumot agluyim, afal pishe nein ebris. But all parts of her body that are usually revealed, even if he's enjoying it, it's okay. With other arayis who said it's a problem, this is an example where it's okay. Then what's this deal about lo istakil afil bakeva, or in those areas that are mechusim shavo? By the way, there's a, there's a question about her hair. What if she does not always doesn't always have her hair? We're not so machmir on that. What, it, what we're talking about here is much more certain parts of the body that are very, very not nice to look at, not senua to look at. And the Mechaber uses here the lotion a cable, which is the heel. Now, what could be the heel? I mean, what could be a problem with the heel? Some say it means literally the heel because that, you know, looking, I guess, from the, her, from the back and looking at her heel, that could eventually lead him to look at other things and mess up his mind. Because a lot of what happens with, for example, sitting on her bed, it brings a hearhor, it brings thoughts. So that's how it begins. So it could be that certain things will lead one more than others to do the wrong thing. So that's what the Chacham said, or anything that is mechusa, which is you know, not supposed to be seen. Otherwise, otherwise, I mean, why are you looking at it to begin with? But... The, the real shot in a keva on her heel is because the keva is facing the part of the body which is unclean, if you know what I mean. The back part of the body, the unclean part of the, of the, of the body, from the back. So by looking at the heel, you're close to looking at that part of the body that is not tsanuan, not modest to look at. Now, this is also a problem for other reasons. Rabbis tell us that whoever looks at places of a woman's body that are the chusim, with, uh, obviously with the wrong thoughts, he's not, he just looks at it regularly. He will have children that are not very decent, not very well behaved. You know, with certain thoughts, certain actions, especially during the intimate uh, part of uh, where a husband and wife are together. It's not only an issue of sneers or isur we're talking about here. The consequences that these kinds of actions can have on the children, on the neshamas that come into the kids as a result of the impropriety of certain thoughts and deeds. The Taz talks about this. 
But as we said, the mekoymas are gluing those areas of her body that are open. Can, he can always look at them. The shach explains that it's mutter, even though he's nehenna. He, he enjoys it. Why? Because he muteres lo, she will be mutter very soon. And therefore we're not choshit that there will be a michshol, that there will be, somebody will stumble here. Bishayse brings down that what the two wrote includes, you know, was in this halacha, includes all the places that are mechusim, that are nichla b'mokum In other words, things, areas of the body that are not supposed to be revealed are all included in that area that is not sanua for the husband, just even when she's muteres law. Even though when she... All right, that's what Siv Zayn is all about. Siv Ches is more of a chumrah. It has to do with a hacker of sorts, something to remind the husband and the wife. So royu lo, the mechaber says royu lo. It would be a good idea. It is appropriate. Sheti yachad lo godim bimein nidoso kedeshiyu shneim zoychin tom shein that she should designate certain clothing that she should always wear when she's anida. Husband sees that she remembers, he remembers. They're not going to do things that are against the halacha. But the, the, some of the Achronim here have some doubts about why the Mechaber said it in this language. When from the Gemara, it's not mashma that the reason that she should do that is for a hacker. On the contrary, a woman has to always look good. I've seen the next Saif. The next Saif, which I'll, I might, might as well say it now because they really go together. Saif tells the Mechaber says, Bekoshi hitiruloliskashevimeni doso. Barely, barely did the Chachomim allow a woman to use makeup and to put jewelry when she's Anita, why did they allow it nonetheless? So she should not come across or, or, or appear to her husband as very ugly. You know, for the number of days that she's not together with her husband, if she doesn't do, if doesn't do anything to beautify herself, it may make things worse and bring about distance. And the Chacham didn't want that, so they allowed her to look good. Does that mean she should do it? Well, as we will soon see, she doesn't have to. It all depends on the circumstances. But the difference between si- Ches and Tes is that in Ches, the Mechab is talking about a hacker, which is not so clear from the Gemara that that's what the Chacham had in mind, that a hacker is needed. And perhaps that's what the Mechab just says, Royu law. It's a good idea. It's not, it, and the, and the Boys can explain that because he uses this kind of a language, it's, it's really not even a Humrah. It's just a good idea. And, uh, and uh, if you look at this form of Anilukas uh, Nida today, especially the ones that are basic, they don't even make this requirement that a woman needs to have a, a certain item, whether it's a piece of jewelry or something. I mean, some people do it, but it's not really a necessity. Now, special clothing, the poets can write, according to emphasize that special clothing could be gadim naim. They could be beautiful clothing. That's not the problem here. It's something that stands out that will remind the two of them. But in Sif Tess, we see the other idea, which is very much emphasized in Chazal, in the Gemara, that a woman does need to look appealing to a very, very important idea all the time. Uh, the husband doesn't like the way she... It could be an excuse for a divorce, Chaz Shama. She doesn't take care of herself. Now, that's usually not the nature of the woman. She does want to look good even for herself and for others. But when I say for others, I don't mean for other men. But uh, she does want to look good. So here, it's a very sensitive period, sensitive time that the two are not together. The Chacham therefore allowed her, even though she's going to look appealing, and this might, you think, uh, bring them closer to each other and so forth. They were not so choshish. On the contrary, they were more choshish for Shalom Bais. They were more choshish that they'd they be close to each other afterwards, that they should feel good about each other. So that's why in Sif Tes, we see clearly that it's permissible to, to wear nice clothing and to look good and so forth. Now, the Orach HaShulchan, as I began to tell you, says, I, I thought it was interesting, says that all these halachas per, that pertain to how she should appear in her husband's eyes, whether not put on her best show or put on her best show, depends on the couple. And it was, for some couples, it just might be too much if she dresses up so beautiful. And uh, I should say for, some, for men more than for women. For the men, it could be a problem. 
you know, if she dresses up and she's really looking all, you know, her best, it could be that for that particular individual, it will be an issue. So for him, she has to make a hacker. She has to make, just put on something that he should not focus too much on her. Or, as there's another Chazal that says that it's even praiseworthy of a woman if she puts on nothing and is minavel atzmo. She actually makes herself look very, very simple during that time. And, I, and this is, of course, being done Hashem Shemayim. So it all depends on the circumstances. So when you take this Chazal and that Chazal, you say to say, what a minute, aren't they contradicting each other? Here is some concept of heker or nivu, or not doing anything, so not to bring on any here hurim on the husband. And here we see, no, that the Chachamim were, were matin nonetheless. So the Orch HaShulot says it has more to do with the situation, with the particular husband and the, the couple. You know, is it too much for him? Then obviously she should be more modest and more careful. We don't want this man to start looking at other women. And, and you know, that's why a woman does always have to look good. She has to uh, be appealing to him. So it's, it's not a requirement today for her to really do it. Unless, of course, there is some issue, there is some problem. You know, the husband can't control himself. And this is an issue. Man can, a man can lose his control, can, lose, can have very bad judgment. I don't know, just came back from a trip, or just uh, thought about somebody. Elections. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, anything can happen. So the Chachamim knew what is a necessary Chaka and what is really acceptable during this time that she's a nigger. All right. In Sif Yud and Yud Gimel, Yud through Yud Gimel, we're going to be talking about things that a woman can do for her husband and things that she cannot do. Whenever I come to this Seifa, I laugh because read what women used to do for their husband, you say to yourself, wow, I wish they did half of that today. We're going to see an example of washing her husband's feet. How do you like that, Ila? <laughs> <laughs> but, these again, these are areas where there can be physical contact. These are areas that are considered in the category of chiba, affectionate. These are things that are much more of a kirva, of a closeness, than just, you know, uh, putting on a nice dress, right? These are things, these are real, real uh, issues of kirva. So see if you read as follows. Kol melochos she'isha oysa lebalo nido. I'm sorry, kol melochos she'isha oysa lebalo nido oysa loy. Any melochos that a woman does for her husband, she does all kinds of things. She's dinner for him. Anita can also do for her husband. Chutz, with the exception, Mimeziga Sakois, she can, let's translate it for now, pour him a cup. I'll explain what that means. I'm just going to translate it for this moment, pouring a cup, even though it could be in other things. With the exception of pouring a, something in a kois, Shasuro Limzaga Kois, she's not allowed to, she's not allowed to pour for him a cup. And, Laniko Lefonov, Alashulchan, she cannot put it to him in front of him, in other words, serve it to him if she didn't pour it to him. Elen and the table, Elen Kintasashum Heker, again we're back to Heker, unless she does it in a way that it's a Heker. What's a Heker in this case of serving? Kigon Shitani Chen Alashulchan, she puts down that cup on a table, Biat Smol, with her left hand. Tani Chen Alakar, she puts it down on a pillow, on a keset, on the, on the, Guess it is like a uh, mizron, like a mattress. A biyad yamina, even with the right hand. Some hacker, something that will remind the two of them that she cannot do things the regular, the ordinary way. Now, what's this Karen Kesset doing over here? Pillows? I mean, we're eating right now. A pillow? A mattress? What is this all about? Well, that's how they ate in the past. They actually sat on the floor on pillows. Not on table chairs. Actually, not. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Years ago, they had there. Yes. Amongst the people, there was this came from right into the show. Yeah. Know, yeah. And so after davening, he was living right next door. Uh huh. And in the back, where the garage was, there was food and there was singing. It was very nice. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, so during the time that she is Anita, there are certain things 
that bring that can have the potential to bring about Kirov and Chibo, and Kirov and Chibo, of course, uh, this kind of closeness could lead to Hergel Dover. He can get them doing more serious things later on. So the Rambam, in discussing these halachas, also brings down that similarly with Kirov, with Arias, with other women, as Chazal tells us, you can't use a woman. Have her pour you a cup, all kinds of things. Can you do this for me, please? She's not your wife, right, or your daughter. Because these kinds of things, even with other Arias, still bring to Kirov. And because of that, these particular examples that we're going to mention are even more serious than other Harkakas that do not necessarily apply with other Arias. So here, what we're going to be talking about here are examples of things that actually apply almost across the board with, with other arayas too. Whereas one exception to this, even though it's very, very uh, kind of a closeness or intimate type of behavior, with a choyle, there, there are some exceptions with a person who's sick. Even though we're saying that these types of, of actions Bring, a, bring about Kirvan Chiba, still there can be an exception sometimes in one of them, Choyle or Choylo, sick or he, she sick. So what are the, the Archotas? So we, we began to say about Nezikas Akhois, about pouring the cup. Whenever you see the term, pretty much when you see the term, Nezikas Akhois, what it's talking about is really diluting, diluting wine with wine. Wine was strong in those days, and before they went ahead and drank the wine, they diluted it with water. So limzog also could mean not only to pour, to be diluting the water. Either way, she's pouring, she's pouring water into the wine, and this kind of, of meziga, where this pouring wine, which is also meziga, or diluting that wine with water, is a, is a very much a, an affectionate act. Chacham consider that a very, very affectionate act. The, the attention her husband by doing that personally. Yes. Yeah. Oh, we're talking. Uh, that's what we're going to talk about. That's what this halacha is about. That's, that's, what, that's what this halacha is. What exactly is involved here? Are we talking about only wine? Are we talking about other drinks? Are we talking about food? And some boys can even go as far as saying, well, wait a minute. What if she pours it, but she doesn't bring it? What if she brings it to him, but she didn't pour it? We see from the shach and the bath that they could, that they are machmer on that. That it's not just necessarily that you need both to pour it and put it in front of him. But some are machmer, whether it's even with one or part of that process, unless of course he doesn't see any of it. So she poured it in the kitchen, somebody else brought it to him. That would be a problem. And then the question is whether this applies for food as well. Mezika Zakois here is clearly a, a problem because it's considered an act of chiba. But is, is other food also an act of chiba or not? The Mechaber doesn't seem to be saying that. So here he says, Oisolo, she can do for him a lot of kinds of halachas, iron his shirt. Not a problem. Right? What else? Um, she can get his, she can open his mail, which he may not actually want her to do. Right? <laughs> right? So there are a lot of things that she does. And you see from this, by the way, that the women used to really, and still should, do all kinds of halachas to help their, their, their husband. And the husband should help their wives too. So there's a lot of halachas that are permissible, but some are not. So the first one we see here is Mezika Sakoy Shasur Limzogakoy's Ulaniach Lefono Valashulchan, and to place it on the table. So now what that means is both, apparently, for the Mechaber. In other words, limzoik and to place it. But one without the other, maybe it's permissible. But directly to pour it close to him on the table, the Mechaber is clear that that's also. Unless, we said, she makes a hacker. Nobody seems to disagree really with the hacker so much. If there is a hacker, then it somehow um, neutralizes the effect of doing something directly. In other words, it doesn't have as much chiba. And that's why it's not a problem. All right. So, Mezika is a kois, even though the Mechaber doesn't spell it out, what that kois contains. Poshub shot, it's mashma, that it's wine. That's poshub. That's what it's mashma, and that is how we, that's how you learn the sugya. 
However, the Bach and the Shach, I think others as well, learned that it's talked about even Shar Mashkim. The Mechaba didn't spell out just wine, but it's all therefore talking about other drinks as well. And some explain that other drinks does not include water. Even though that's not so clear, but that's what others say. Still, we are machmer. We are machmer with other drinks, even though it's not wine, but there are poiskim who are makel with water. So if you ask, is water permissible? Some poiskim say it's okay. Why? Because water is not a dover choshub. And they take some water. So the real iser, over which there's no suffix here, is wine. The question is about shar mashkin, other drinks. So we're machmer in general drinks, not to for the wife not to pour her husband down, especially an alcoholic beverage. His presence? Yes, in his, his presence. In his pre- no, we're talking about in his so presence. So he's something in the kitchen. That's correct. That's room. correct, yeah. So we're talking about here in the presence of her husband, and because that is a, a real maizahiba. No. That's a good question. What if the husband poured what if the husband poured himself a cup of coffee and she just wants to add him a little cream? I saw the Hroinim bring down that it's okay. So I'm saying I guess what you're saying is with ice. Right. So I, I would I would say I would say that would be okay. Yeah. So they are also Mahmoud the Bach and the Shah, I, I believe uh, others as well, that with ochel, with food, if it's only being brought for him and not for the rest of the family on the table just to serve him the plate directly in front of him, put it down in front of him, that would also be usher, and the, it's comparable to Mazika's Akhoi's according to them. But the Shach says that this is a Khumra, and therefore he would be lenient with a Khoyla when it comes to food. Cause is makel altogether with a vast macholim or bringing food, even if, a person is not, even if the husband is not sick. Chokhmah Sodom is machmir, unless he does it with the Shinui. So that's the gabe, the food. Is, is the food. Does the food have the same Allah as drink or not? Some are machmer, some not. All right. Seif Yud Aleph, another Rakhota, is a suro lahatsiya mitosa bifonov. She cannot make his bed in front of him. Mechaber elaborates. The dafka prisas hadinim de amikse shuderech chibo. That this is only. If we're talking about the sheets, or whether it's the sheet that covers the mattress or the sheet that he covers with himself, the cover of the bed, all of this is derechiba, but just putting down all the pillows, laying out or straightening out the mattress, shu torach, which is more of a bother, it weighs more. The eno derechim, that's not so much derechiba, shori that's mutter. And if it's not before him, it's not in his presence, I call motor, everything is motor. I feel you're there. Even if he knows Shehi Matsas Oysam, he knows that she did it, it's okay. That what? If it's not in his presence, calling of the drink. Right. It's interesting. That what? Who mentioned it? If it's not in front of him, it's about Right. Which he didn't mention expressly by the in mm-hmm. front of him, by the calling of the things he made. Right. It's right. But that's what the book says expressly. He, it's saying. It's interesting that it's a, Yeah, yeah. You're right. And that is why we needed the Meforshim or the Poiskim. We needed their input as to, well, what if it's not in front of him? So we learn now from the other one that this should not really be that different. They both are my sechiba, laying out the bed, laying out the linen, uh, pouring. If, if it's not in his presence, it's, it's okay. Because it not, does not have the same effect as if it's done in front of him. So with the bed, or the bed linen, it's clearly that which is a maizahiva. Pillows and mattresses and the like is not. But what about blankets? Blankets do not weigh a lot. And blankets would qualify as bed linen, sheets, that the Mechaber is speaking. And the Chora, I saw in the Poiskim, it should be also to in front of him. And this, of course, is also from the Gemara. And there we see that it's only if it's the front of him, in front of him. And this qualifies as one of those things that is a maizahiba. It's affectionate, but only if it's in front of him. Now, what if she's making the bed because she wants to just clean up the room? He's gotten up, he's going to work. He's going to his office or whatever, going to show. And she's going to do it. And he's there. What do you say? So... Boys can explain, they differentiate, that the real issue here is if he's getting ready to go to bed. 
that's more of a maizachiba. If he's gotten off the bed, if he's going to work and she's organizing, he just wants everything to look clean and organized, there's no reason to be ma. Unless well, possibly she's preparing it for, the, for that night and he knows that. That's different. But just to organize the room, to make it look good, to clean it up, that's not the Isra. The Isra is in preparation for going to sleep that night. All right, the next seif, you'd base a suro litzok lo gmaim, virchotz panad yada veraglav, afilu ena nogat bo, afilu hem maim tsonenim. She cannot pour him water to wash his face, his hands and feet, even if she's not touching him, just to pour the water, because obviously to touch him would be a problem. We know that. But even just to pour the water, even if they're cold water. So what's going on over here? What if he wants to wash his hands because he wants to, you know, we call it Yiddish Nagelwasser. So the poets can do differentiate between the Tzorich Mitzvah and whether this is to bathe himself or to clean himself up in the morning or so forth. There is a difference. The Rashba explains that here, first of all, we're talking about that she's pouring the water on him. Whereas the Shach and others say that even, even if she's not pouring it just to bring it for him, it would be a problem. But with the Tilis Yadayim for a mitzvah, the Shevet Alevi, that she can bring him as long as she doesn't pour it for him. So the Tzorich Mitzvah without the pouring should not be a problem. Whereas these examples in the Mechaber are more of a Maisechiva for him to wash himself. That is why it would be a problem. So you see from the Taz, not like the Shach, that the Chorah Mashmum Meloshin Zesh Asur Alitin Mayim Bekeli, Vehu Yirchatz, Elam Kain, Achar, Vehu Yirchatz Achar Kach, Aval Be'em Oseyin Okein, Vezeh Loshin Mashbo, Afilu Hu Roichetz Ve'im Otsekes, Shilu Lirchatz Be'yodea, Afilu Belav, Velo Rechitz Asur. I mean, for her to do it with her own hands, obviously, that's also completely, that's Kiruv Bosor. So Mashma De Muteres Lahachin No Mayim Bekeli, from that is mashma that should perhaps prepare the water and he should wash himself. After all, the lotion here used by the Mechaber is, is litzer klomayim. To pour to him would be the problem, not to prepare the water. To just to, pour, to prepare the water and the, to bring it to him. See, by food, we say that that would be an issue too. Yeah, you know, wash yourself here. Rinse yourself, wash yourself. So that is a maizachiba. Unless it's the Tzorich Mitzvah, perhaps, it's the Tzorich Mitzvah, then that takes away a little bit of the whole idea of Chiba. So the question is, if to bring it to him would be a problem too. But the Mechaber clearly says that if the real issue here is Litzakloi, is to actually do the pouring for him to wash himself, that would be the problem. That would be the Maise Chiba. Yud Gimel, Keshem Shasur Olim Zagloi, Tachu Oso Lim So now we're going to take the Halachas, and revert them in the direction of him to her. We saw some of the halakhas from her to him, now from him to her. So, Keshem Shasura leaves the glory in the same way that she cannot pour for him. Kahu also leaves the glory, he cannot pour for her. Even to send her a cup of wine is a sur. Whether it's a kos of a bracha or some other cup, in whom Yukulat is especially for her. If there's a family on the, t- on, the, on the table, everybody's sitting and eating together, and others are going to drink, and they drink before her, she drinks after them, then it's okay. So this leads us to the question of Kiddush. Exactly. So this, this, this leads us to the question of Kiddush. She definitely gets first. So you don't give it to her. You pour it into her cup and let her take the cup. Very simple. That's the way it's done. You can pour it into a glass and let her take the glass. You can be sitting next to her, you can pour it into a glass, and she can then take the glass. You don't take the cup that you pour it into and give it to her, even though you're not giving it to her directly in her hand, obviously, but presenting it to her. That's called a shager kos. That you don't do. So that's what the Mechaber here said. It's not only about pouring, it's to send her a kos. Shulyay Nasur. All of this is a form of chiba, unless there's other people involved in the table, 
other people present in the table, they're all drinking. It's not so apparent that it's being done there. Now, this brings us back to the original Nikuda that I, I think I say, I said it in the very beginning, that when it comes to our chokas by Nida, you don't want to make it too obvious, your wife. You don't want to make it too obvious that she's going to the mix. A, a woman should not tell anybody that the mix, not even her own children. There's a certain sneers involved here that, that has to be preserved. So there are certain awkward situations when one is invited over. One is by his parents, her parents, by guests. And, you know, imagine throwing it to her. Why? <laughs> throwing the keys across the table. Here, honey, catch. Well, what are you doing that for? I mean, some people would understand that that's why he's doing it. So you want to not make it in any obvious way. It doesn't look right. But sometimes it's difficult. So you really have to be as careful as possible. I know some people that simply do, do not go to eat by somebody else's home because of that. If they have a baby and it's going to be uncomfortable and awkward, and if they have to do things in a very, very awkward way because of that. You know. But it's more, it's really not so much that she's a nida at that point because I'm sure they can conceal that. You know when it's more difficult? When she has to go to the mikvah. Why are you leaving so early? The night is young. They don't know that she has to go to the mikvah. Then what do you say? Then what do you do? We're going for a walk. Well, you can go for a walk later. We'll go with you. <laughs> <Not only. laughs> so, actually, so eating over someone else's house, you definitely could do it and get away with it. You could definitely seal it. You just have to be extra careful not, not to give it away and to do things properly according to the halakha. But going to the mikvah could be a little bit more complicated. As it is Friday night, it's not always eat because you have to make an appointment. I think the Dr. Shemini will talk about it when we get Hilchas Tevila, how that is handled. It's handled a little bit different than on a regular, ordinary day. What can she do in preparation for the tevila on Friday night is not the same as she, what she could do during a regular, ordinary day. So, if there are other present at the table, it, it's an advantage too, because then it's not something is really not necessarily being done directly for her. It's being done indirectly, then that would be okay. All right, see if you dalad. The last few seifim of the simon, kol elu ha'archokos tzorech laharchik ben bimeini doso ben bimele buna. As I said earlier, all of these archokos that are mentioned here, they need to be done, carried out, whether she is a nida or bimele buna. Libuna from the word lavan, white. When she wears white, when she's clean, when she's counting, and they spiroso, you could say, when she's getting ready to go to the mikveh, she has to watch out that there are no stains, that she's completely clean. So regardless, it makes no difference whether she's a real nida, where she's having a period, or where she's getting, getting ready to become clean. Shehem kol yemei sfirosa. These are all part of the, the days that she counts. The, the, the yemei libuna is part of the days she counts. Vein chiluk v'chol eile. There's no real dif- difference between the first half of her nida, the second half, of, or the second stage. V'chol eile ben roi mamash lemoitzes kesem. And in all these, there's no difference whether she saw, she really saw, she really had her period, or she had a kesem. So the last words of the Mechav of Ein Chilu B'chol Eilo is not only talking about that there's no chilu between the first days when she's Anida and the last days, but also there's no chilu on regardless of why she's Anida, whether it's a regular period or where she found the kesem. And the Ramah says, V'yeshom Ein Le'achim Bimei Libuno Binyan Isura Chilo Imo Bika'oro there is one opinion that does say that you don't have to be machmer in this one particular specific halacha. That bimei libuna, as far as isur achila, eating together with your beke'ara, in one ke'ara. agin lehakel and a lot of people are makel, are leaning with it, but nevertheless, he says, yesh lehachmer. One should be strict and not make any chilukim. That is how we pass him. We don't really make chilukim, differentiate between the various kinds of uh, activities. Something that is also is also all the time. Something that is also including eating together applies all the time. What would be the svaro of why this would be per- permissible? Only because towards the end, as she's getting ready to go to the mikveh, it, it was meant more of let her encourage to go to the mikveh. You know, so that, that w- that's the whole idea here is do something perhaps to not uh, allow her this uh, feeling of being distant or, you know, not being wanted and somehow showing her that, you know, that you do care, you do want her. So there is a tzad, there is a side to say that this particular detail of eating together may be permissible, be mainly buna. But 
I think everybody's machmer. That we, I mean, I don't know of anybody that says go ahead and do that. There's no such minig, and the no, there's no one that says okay now, achila is mutter. From the same kara. The last few halachas deal with someone sick. If he is sick, the Elo Mishi Sham Sheno Zuloso, and he has nobody to help him except for her. Muteras the Shamsha, she is Muteras. She can help him. While he's sick, Rak, the Tizar, she needs to be careful with Yosef very, very much. Extra, Shetucha Lizar, me a hotter spawn of Yoda, but I love that's also me to be fine. She does have to be extra careful from washing his hands, his feet, his face, and making the bed for him. These are things of more Chiba than others. And from that, she has to be extra careful. But pouring him a cup is definitely okay. Even though we're machmer. Also, that would be one of the things that would be mutter. So what do we see so far? That she can do certain things for him. Why? Because if he's the one that's sick, his Yetzirah is tired. His Yetzirah is weak. He will not necessarily think about the wrong thing at the time that he's sick. Masha'in can, if she's the one that's sick, then the halacha will change a little bit. We will soon see the Chaber and the Ramo. There's some, some agreement about that. But any time that a person is going to need extensive help and a, for an extended period of time, not for a couple of days, he has a very bad. The right thing to do is to get help, outside help, whether it's kids around the house or hire someone. If it's going to involve a lot of direct contact, if it's not a lot of direct contact, just, you know, honey, can you get me this? Can you do this? Yeah. And it's not very direct physical contact, then it's okay. But what would be an example of physical contact? She, whether it's for him or for her, but especially it's for her. Uh, but even for him. He's uh, in a wheelchair. He has to be put into the wheelchair. He has to be taken out of the wheelchair, put into bed, laid down. By the way, I saw one of the police say that it's not a problem to prepare a bath for him. You just open the faucet, fill up the tub. Certain things, I mean, are, are simply not chiva. But there are other things, especially when there's physical contact, that are a big question. Now, if somebody's very, very sick, has sakanas nafashas, there's no, there's no doubt whatsoever that you're from this. So here we're talking about pretty much a choyle she'en busa. Nonetheless, he needs help. So we see that there's more of a heter when he's sick as opposed to when he's sick, as to what can be done. So, so the Mechaber Sofa tells us that if there's nobody else and he's the one that's sick, she's allowed to help him. He just has to be extra careful. However, Isha Choyla, the he nida, if the woman is a Choyla and she's a nida, also the Bala Ligaba, the husband cannot touch her. To help her. For example, to pick her up, put her down, or support her. However, the Ramah says, Yesha Imrim, the Ain La. This is the Ramah. In Ein Lo, the Bukhari didn't say this, but the Ramah clarifies, at least according to his opinion, that in Ein Lo, there's nobody else, Mishi, Shamshena, nobody to help her. Mutter Bakol, he's allowed to do everything. That is the meaning. If Tzricha Har Belechach, these are the key words, she needs all that help. Otherwise, we're not saying that she should take care of herself, get outside help. You'd sign, what about if the husband is a doctor? In Bala if her husband is a doctor, also he cannot feel her pulse. He's touching her. But, what I wrote earlier, the Ramos says that you, well, we are lenient. If she really needs his help, there's nobody else. The Mimashmesh law that he can take her pulse. The, I'm sorry, the Mishamesh law that he can help her. Then the more so that he can take her pulse. You know, if he's allowed to do other things to help her, the more so he can just take her pulse. What's the big deal? The main Royfe Acher, if there's no other doctor, Utsricha Elav, and she really needs him for other things, uh, and especially the Yesh Sakono Becholon, there's some danger, then there's no question. Right? So Kol Shekin, the more so that it's mutter to take her pulse, if there's nobody else, she very much needs him, and there is a Sakana. And what would be a, a, a good reason? She has high temperature. You have to definitely have to check her out. Then the Ramah finishes up with something very, very somewhat cryptic. He brings down this tradition, and he says, 
In mutter le nida li konos le bezach nesis li spala li a woman nida allowed to come forward to daven. So you may say to yourself, well, what's wrong with that? Well, the, the, there was an opinion, and there is to some extent, an opinion, that a woman when she's a nida, she should not go to the cemetery. A woman that's pregnant, for sure should not go to the cemetery. But uh, Mr. Brewer speaks a little bit about this. Coming to Betensa and looking even at the Sefer Torah, there are some that do not do that. Not that it's usher. Nobody says it's usher, and nobody should ever think that it's usher. There's no answer for that. But that is, some people do that. I haven't heard of this uh, being done today, even though there are some that mention it, and they did ask me about it. There's really no problem, especially if a woman wants to hear, you know, the davening and the Pia Shoifer and, and all the other mitzvahs she wants to be involved. There's definitely, she should not be discouraged in doing that. But the last halacha about about choyla, or choyla, regardless of who is sick, if there's a mokum shash sakona, you don't ask questions. You know, you take care of it right away. It's mashma from all of these halachas, from the mechaber, that what what really is asr is negia more than anything else. It's, there's no issue to be moishit, to bring her stuff. Even though in other situations we say that that our chaka would include bringing, giving her directly. By chole chole, we see that the main iser, or the main area that one has to be careful with, is negia. In other words, even, even though we're talking about a chole she'ein basakona, and he's not a chole she'yesh basakona, still, to bring him stuff is okay. To bring him medication, to bring him what he needs. Whereas the example, the last example of taking a pulse, that's more chomer because it's physical. Now, why are we makele by choylech? We're talking about choylech she'en basakana. What's the core of the leniencies? Because pretty much we're dealing here with Isurim de Rabbanon. And with Isurim de Rabbanon, there's a tashbetz, I believe. It's brought down that Isurim de Rabbanon are mutra for choylech she'en basakana. So here, the tzorek choylech, that is why we're makele. By Mishu Shadoifek, checking her pulse, even if her husband is a doctor, it's also lechatchil at least. I mean, because that goes according to the Rambam, who holds that kirvul arayas, touching, is an iser deraisa. Even though it appears that there's Beis Yosef leaves that with a tzorach iyon, if that would apply here. But the Ramah paskins like the Ramban, that is mashma from the Ramban that it's mutter to take the pulse if there is no other doctor. So obviously, when it comes to issuing the rabbanon. There is more of a consensus that one can be lenient. When we talk about actually touching, the ideal thing is to get outside help. Unless it's impossible, it's too difficult, then at least the Ramos says one could be like a walk a billion. Okay, we'll stop over here.